Oh, Dr. Ron England coming back from Daytona State College again. This is actually part two of the um, Firefly game. Um, and you do want to watch part one of the Firefly game so that you understand what we're doing with it. There's a quick overview of the Firefly game. It was a nice little matching game that we came, that uh, one of the students came up with that I've worked on, where essentially you drop the characters from Firefly into the correct name blocks on a web page. Okay, relatively straightforward. The flaw in the previous JavaScript in the previous lecture was that the data is actually in the JavaScript. And anybody who does a lot of programming says, you know what, if you can separate the data away from the actual code, that is a good thing. So how do we do that? Well, in that original piece of code, the data looked like this. This was what the data actually looked like. And all I did was I assigned that to a variable. Um, the one difference that I made was I actually put quotes around number and name and all the different, um, the, all the different entities here. And the reason is, is because I wanted to put it in JavaScript object notation or JSON. So I threw some quotes around everything. And now I've got this file that I can save as a separate file with a .json extension. Uh, ignore the text extension there, it's actually saved as a JSON extension. Now the data is external. Of course, the problem is, the data is external, you got to get it. Well, first thing let's make sure is that the JSON that we wrote, this object notation, is actually valid. It's an easy way to do this. I can go ahead and then take this, and I can copy it into JSONLint. JSONLint is a website. It's just jsonlint.com. You simply put the JavaScript, the JSON in there, you hit the button, and if it returns valid JSON, then you're good to go. All right, so now we're ready to actually do a little bit of coding here. So um, how does this coding work? Well, now I don't have that code, all that data in there anymore. I'm going to have to read it from a, fly, a file. So what I did and this is another demonstration, so I put it into Dropbox. Okay, I actually put that JSON file into Dropbox and I made it, made it public. The reason I did that was, well, hey, you can use Dropbox. Hey, it's an easy, you know, it's free, it's, you know, there's always a pay version. So um, there's a way to actually get to Dropbox and get the public file out. And I called the directory which the JSON file was in called JSON directory. So it's just a variable JSON directory. Okay, now, here is where all of the action actually occurs. I saved the JSON in Dropbox. I have a public URL that will get me to that and I actually can prove that because what I can do is I can copy this. I can go over to a new web. The reason I said JSON directory plus firefly.json, well, the, because I'm going to use a command called get JSON. This command right here, get JSON, which is a um, jQuery command and it returns a jQuery uh, at, at HTTP header request. Well, it's a kind of an odd object, but we're not going to worry about that object right now. But there's an argument and one of the arguments to the get JSON is a callback function that will get called. So the first argument is this string which is the location of your JSON file. Okay, Now, this can get tricky because you have to put it somewhere which is accessible as a URL and also has the ability to um, and also has the ability to um, has the XML MIME type or the MIME type set for JSON correctly which is application dot slash JSON. So you may have to set the MIME type now the beauty of this is, is in the public Dropbox, if you do make a public Dropbox and you put it right there, then that will be set correctly. The second argument is a callback function. So in other words, this function is going to get called, and it's a success callback function, so it gets called on success of doing this. And it does have, it, it does, actually will take multiple arguments, but there's only one argument we actually care about, which is the first argument, which is the JSON that comes back. So this JSON is returned, and we're going to do one thing if this function get when this function gets called. So in other words, when you do the get JSON, and you have the callback function, and the function gets called, we wish to lay out. We wish to call the function layout cards. 
Now, there's a couple of other ways to do that. Like, you can actually specify the callback function with some of the different commands. So if you want to look at some of these, I'll look at the AJAX command, or the, the AJAX function in, in jQuery, the, and the getJSON function in getQuery. The getJSON is just a subset of the AJAX anyway. Now, it returns this object, and this whole thing right here is the, it will actually bring that object together. If it is not able to get the JSON file, we wish it is going to, it's going to actually call the fail function. So, in other words, this is going to bring back that um, HTTP request object. However, if there's a fail, it's going to call the fail of this. And on the fail, I've also got a callback function. So, this dot fail, okay, would get called, and it has a callback function. And all I'm going to do if it actually fails is you're going to say error loading JSON because none of it's going to work. So I just pop up an alert and said, hey, I couldn't load the JSON. That is the action. All the action occurs right there. So in other words, you have the get JSON. I have two arguments that I'm using for it. One is where is the location of the JSON file? The other one is a callback function that will get called on the success of the get JSON command, which calls another function called layout cards. Now, what I did was with the code from the previous example, okay, it had all the activity that laid out those cards. I'm not going to go through that. It's in the previous example. But I did reconfigure it slightly because I'm passing it two variables, directory and cards. The directory is the directory of where those card images are because you do need them, because I use them in this portion here. I actually, I actually use directory plus card name. And cards. Well, remember, the cards was that array of objects that had the property name and number. So now we're going to go back to what we actually made this call. The JSON, that variable, J-S-A-O-N, it's a variable that I've done, and I could have put anything in here. I could put data. I could put A. I could have put X. Okay. That variable, okay, dot cards is in object notation. So the dot cards of that JSON will return the array of the cards. Well, remember, the array of those cards was this array right here, cards with all the nine cards with the properties number and name. So I get that object array back because the Java, JavaScript object notation brings back this object that follows the structure of the JavaScript object notation, and it's accessible as an object using, let's say, json.cards, which brings back the cards. But I could just have easily said json.cards bracket zero dot name, and that would have given me the name in space zero, which you can go and look and see would have been mal. Okay, so that's how that works. The rest of it is described in very good detail. The code is available to you um, on the um, on JS Fiddle, and um, hopefully this gets you started with that concept of separating data and code, and then being able to retrieve that data, okay, and putting it into a JSON object, and then accessing it through the object notation. Really powerful stuff. And if you think about what I mean by powerful stuff is the previous version had, um, let's see, let's go ahead and get rid of that. This previous version had everything hard coded. So if you wanted to make changes, you had to go into the JavaScript code. Well, now I have the ability to separate the data, which is the card, the names of the images and the numbers of the images. And I can do this for any data into a separate file, retrieve that file, and then use it with my JavaScript. Very powerful because now let's say I want to do a different game with different images and different cards. I only simply have to do a different JSON file with those instead, and I don't have to rewrite or recopy any of that code. I can do all with the same exact set of code. So now I can create a game where you could actually click the TV show you wanted and see the characters of different TV shows. Okay, all in one page, without having to have all that data in the one page, it simply would go out and retrieve a different JSON file. So hopefully um, you caught all this. I know this is some more complex stuff that we're working with here. Um, however, it's also very powerful. 
the basic concept looking at this piece of code. I took the data, stuck it in a format called JSON, put it in a separate file. I then retrieved that file. And when I successfully retrieved that file, I went ahead and used it and passed over the data that I needed to the function layout cards, which laid out the cards. That's the bottom line of what actually occurred in this. Thank you very much and good programming.